Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of um, medical data uh, from various patients, just some basic medical features. We have uh, age, sex, BMI, number of children, if they're a smoker or not, uh, the region of wherever they're from, and uh, the expenses that they will incur. So we're going to try to predict the medical expense um, based on the other factors. Now there's not a, a lot to go off of here, but let's see how well we can do. So uh, let's hop into the notebook. I'm going to be importing NumPy and Pandas just for working with the data. And then I'll be using the train test split function and standard scalar from sklearn for pre-processing. And we'll use a whole bunch of different um, regression models in order to make our predictions. Uh, here I'm just turning up warnings to keep the notebook clean. And I'll go ahead and import all of that and we can load in the data using pandas.readcsv. So I'll grab the file path up here, insurance.csv, passing it in, and we can take a look. Um, so it's a pretty simple data set, only 1,300 rows and seven columns, the last of which is what we're trying to predict. So let's get a little more information on the data set with data.info, and we can see that we have um, no missing values in the whole data set. Uh, the, we have the maximum number of non-nulls in every in every column. We also have three uh, object columns, and if we look back at the uh, data, uh, data set description, it says we have uh, four numeric features and three nominal features. Um, and so the expenses is not actually a feature. So essentially, we have three numeric features and three nominals. So let's take uh, let's let's actually start pre-processing. And we're going to create a function called preprocess inputs. Uh, and it's going to take in a data frame. It's going to make a copy of the data frame. And it's going to return the data frame. Uh, so right now, this function just copies a data frame that we pass in. So if we get uh, x equals preprocess inputs data, uh, we're just making a copy. And so x will be the processed version of the data. And data is going to be remain the unprocessed version. Um, so now anything we want to do to the data, we can add in here, and it will uh, apply it to a fresh copy, so we don't have to uh, alter the original data. Um, and so before we go on, I'd like to get a little more information. We already know there's no, uh, there are no missing values, but I'd also like to know how many unique values we have in each of the nominal features. So note that I can, I can call a x.select dtypes object to get just the columns uh, that have object data types. So this is going to exclude um, all of the numeric columns, because uh, I don't really care how many unique values we have in the numeric columns. Uh, but the nominal columns I do care, because I want to know how to encode them properly. So what we can do is iterate through these columns. Um, so dot columns, we'll just get the column names that have um, object data types. And we can say for each column in this list of columns, uh, we will get a dictionary that's going to map uh, the column name. So column, uh, we're going to map it to the number of unique values in that column. So we can do that with x sub column dot unique, and then take the length of that. And that will give us the number of unique values. Uh, and that's going to be column to a uh, number of unique values in the column for every column in the object columns. And now you can see how many we have in each one. Uh, so because we have two in these, uh, we have to make sure that we don't do the traditional one-hot encoding. And the reason for this, uh, if we look at it, uh, let's say we take, let's say we want to one-hot encode the, oh, we'll use the smoker column. Okay, so x sub smoker uh, is currently, this is just a series. Um, but if we one-hot encode this with pandas.getdummies, uh, you can see no goes to one column, yes goes to another, and the one will represent the original value of an example. So you, you can see here we have a one uh, in the yes column for the first example and the last example. And that's just because we have a yes here and a yes here. But there's a problem with this. Uh, if we try to one-hot encode a, um, a column that has only two values, if we, if we take a look at the correlation of these columns, you can see we have a... a um, perfectly negative correlation between the two columns. Uh, this, this is the correlation between yes and no. 
Uh, and that's an issue because uh, it's it's basically redundant information, right? You don't want you don't want collinearities like this, uh, where we just it's basically the same column just flipped. Um, so let's actually instead of doing this, do a binary encoding instead. Uh, which one way to, to do that is really just to drop one of these. We could drop either one of these columns uh, to get the uh, a valid encoding. Either one of these is a valid encoding. Uh, but we can also do it this way, where we take the smoke column and we uh, we call dot replace on it and we pass in a mapping that will map no to zero and yes to one. And that will actually it'll be the same as this second column here. Uh, you can see we have one at the top and one at the bottom, uh, which is the same as this, uh, these two. Uh, and this is sort of a nicer way because then we can actually automatically we can actually choose which gets mapped to which, and it looks more clean. So uh, we are going to use this kind of scheme for the for value column, which is region. So if I just put region in here, you can see each region gets its own column, and now it makes more sense because there's not uh, perfect collinearity between uh, the two columns. So, uh, right, let's do the one hot encoding for the region column, and we'll do this binary encoding for the sex and smoker columns. So, up here, we'll do binary encoding. Uh, so, we'll do it for the sex column, where we just take it uh, and call dot replace. We'll map female to zero and male to one, although it's completely, uh, this, this doesn't matter at all. Um, it's just a convention. And then we will do the same exact thing for the smoker column. Uh, so mapping no to zero and yes to one, which is also just a convention. We could flip this if we want. Um, and then we'll do the one hot encoding. And for this, I'd like to get, get uh, we have to get our dummies. So this is going to be our dummies. We'll call them region dummies. It's just going to be this. Uh, well, we could put a, a prefix on it if we want. Um, prefix here equals region. Then it'll just show region in the title so that we know what it's referring to. So why don't we do that? We'll put a prefix in here. Um, and then we're going to add these dummies to our data frame. So df equals pandas doc and cat the original data frame and the new uh, region dummies. And we're, we're uh, concatenating them side by side, so access one. And then when we're done, we can drop the original column, uh, not column, we're dropping region uh, because we don't need it anymore. We've created the new encoding of it. All right, uh, so let's take a look at that. Uh, so we have properly encoded this. You can see the sex column and the smoker column are now just binary encoded, and the region column has been one-hot encoded. So everything is in numerical form now, and we can split and scale the data. So split df into x and y. Uh, so y is going to be what we're trying to predict. That's going to be the expenses column. So df sub expenses, uh, that's, that will be our y. And then uh, our x will be all the rest of the data, which we're going to try to use to predict expenses. So we can get that with df.drop expenses. And we're dropping from axis one, which is the column axis. And now down here, I'm going to return x and y instead of just um, df. So here, we're going to get x and y. Uh, we have a problem. Why? What? Where do we reference it? Here, I just defined it, and now we're returning it. Oh, 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 up here. So, okay. Uh, this should be df. All right. Uh, so now you can see the uh, expenses column is no longer there. It's now just stored in its own variable y. And so now let's do the train test split. So a train test split is going to split horizontally, uh, putting 70% of the data in the train set and the other 30% in the test set. So we'll use the train test split function from sklearn, and we're splitting x and y with a train size of 70%. Uh, this will also shuffle the data. By default, it's on, so I'm just going to keep it on as true. 
and then we'll include a random state as well uh, so that the shuffle and therefore the split is always done in the same way. And then this will return four new sets of the data, x train, x test, y train, and y test. And let's return those new sets of the data instead of x and y. Uh, so now we can take a look at x train, which is the same as x, but just 70% of it. And then x test will be the other 30%. And then we have y train done here. Uh, which looks like this. Uh, just 70% of the label values for each one, or target values. All right, so uh, I think we're ready to scale. So scaling, uh, if we look at the means and variances, we can do xtrain.describe. You can see uh, the mean for each column, they're all over the place. Uh, the standard deviations as well are all over the place. So what I'd like to do is standardize all the columns so that they uh, all take on a similar range of values. Um, so how can we do that? Uh, with a standard scaler is one way. Uh, so we can use a, a number of different scalers. I'm going to use a standard scalar, uh, which is just going to give each column a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. And we're getting this from sklearn, which I imported at the top from sklearn.preprocessing. And I'm going to fit it on the train set. Uh, so I'm only fitting it on the train set because you sort of want to uh, assume you don't have access to the test set while you're doing your pre-processing. Uh, so then we're going to take both x train and x test and uh, scale them each using the fit we have just to the train set. So scalar.transform. In this case, it's a uh, x train, and in this case, it's x test. Uh, so now. Uh, these actually return NumPy arrays. So by the end of here, if we return this, you can see we now have a NumPy array, which is fine. We could feed this into our model if we wanted, but it's not so nice to look at. So let's go and change them back into data frames uh, with pandas.dataframe and set the columns, the column names here equal to x.columns. All right, now we can see it properly. And if we call describe on it again, uh, you can see the means are all extremely close to zero. Uh, and the standard deviations are all extremely close to 1. Uh, so they're actually exactly the same. So uh, that did it, um, and we're ready to train. So I'm going to train a whole bunch of models. Uh, I imported them all up here. We're going to do linear regressions, simple lin linear regression. Uh, then we'll do the k-nearest neighbors algorithm. Uh, neural network, uh, support vector machine with a linear kernel, support vector machine with a radial, radial basis function kernel, and then our decision tree. Um, and then we'll have two ensemble models, which will be the random forest regressor, which is a bagging technique, and the gradient boosting regressor, which is a boosting technique. Essentially the difference here, uh, they're both going to generate decision trees. Uh, only difference here really is that uh, the random forest is generating them in uh, in parallel, whereas the gradient booster is uh, generating them in series. So, uh, right, let's grab all of those. And we're going to create, I'm going to create a bunch of, uh, like, a dictionary of models here. Um, actually, just to save on time, I'll copy this in. So it looks like this. Basically, I just made a new instance of each one that we're using, and then I'm mapping the name of the model to that instance. Uh, and this will make it easy to train them and also print out like messages, statements about them. So we can say for each name and model in models.items. So uh, dot .items returns the key value pairs of a dictionary as tuples so that we can iterate through them like this. Um, and we can fit each model x train, y train, not test, train. So we fit each model one by one, and then we're going to print out uh, just a verification that that model was trained. Uh, and there you go. Uh, so they've all trained, and now we can get the results. So it's also very easy to get the results using this sort of dictionary method when you're training a bunch of different models. Uh, we can say for each name and model in models.items, again, uh, this time we're going to print out the name of the model followed by r squared score 
and we'll display it to five decimal places and then input the R squared score uh, that comes from model.score x test y test. Uh, so by default, um, well, sklearns.score function uh, in the case of a regression task uh, will return the R squared score. And R squared score is a really good way of understanding how your regression model is doing, especially if you don't have some sort of baseline loss to compare it to. Uh, the R squared score is a good way of getting a sense of how good your fit is. It's basically a measure of how dispersed the data is around your fit. Uh, so we can see the, the R squared score for each model like this. And we can compare the results. So the highest possible value an R squared score can get is a 1.0, uh, which is means it's a perfect fit. You never get a 1.0, but you can get high. Um, and then it can go all the way into the negatives if it's really bad. So it looks like three of our models did really badly. That would be the support vector machines and the neural network. Um, looks like our, our simple linear regression and k-nearest neighbors uh, did fairly well. Um, decision tree didn't do as well. And then our, our ensemble methods here really knocked it out of the park. So gradient boosting came in first with a 0.86 r-squared, and right behind it is the random forest with 0.83. So it looks like gradient boosting is the winner in this case. Um, and that will sum up today's video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for more content. And leave any comments you have in the section below. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.